Hey everyone, Shishank this side. I hope everyone's doing well and safe. After a long time, I'm back to my YouTube platform and today we will be going to discuss intelligence dashboard from cost perspective, from performance perspective, from compliance perspective as well. How these dashboards will help you, you know, to understand the resource utilization within your AWS platform. Plus we have an Azure integration too. So I'll show you how to do that. But for now, in this video, uh, we will focus more towards AWS deploying these dashboards and what all those dashboards are all about. Uh, do you need all the dashboard at the same time? So we will be going to discuss all those stuff. Important pointer over here is uh, the dashboards are very useful. Um, you are not paying a lot of costs if you are working in, in, in an enterprise. We are hardly paying 100, 150 bucks in terms of the USD dollars. Uh, so obviously if you are running an enterprise 150 bucks, it's, it's not a big number, right? So let's talk about few of the pointers and I will show you how to deploy these dashboard with the help of cloud formation template provided by AWS. Again, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel because these templates are already available. I'll walk you through the phases and the workflow process, what exactly these dashboards are all about. So let's start cloud intelligence dashboard. It's an open source framework, you know, created by and maintained by customer obsessed AWS. One of the good part of it, like it provide customer some insights where you can take an action, do the optimization opportunities at the scale of an organization. So if you're running hundreds of accounts within an AWS org, then you can have one place where you can see everything from cost perspective, you, where you can do the optimization like GP2 to GP3 conversion and all those stuff. So that's what these dashboards are all about and maintained by the customers obsessed AWS maniac. You can say that supported by a well architected framework. The dashboard can be deployed by any customer using cloud formation template or the command line tool. And the third way is the manual process, right? Where you can do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, phases, the step by step process, obviously the preferred way, if you want to learn then, and you don't want to interact with, you know, what exactly written in a cloud formation template or what exactly written in a CLI tool, a command line tool, then yes, a manual way is always preferred to understand every piece of it. But if you already have a cloud formation template, if you can understand the logic, the flow itself, then cloud formation template becomes very easy for you. That's why we, uh, nowadays we are moving towards an IAC infrastructure as code. These dashboards help customer drive financially accountability, optimize the cost. As I mentioned, track the usage goal, implement the best practices for governance uh, with the help of Tau dashboard, which is more of a trusted advisor dashboard on the security side as well and achieve an operational excellence all in a well-architected pillar. Now, what is well-architected pillars or the framework itself? We already had a, a discussion on this long back. So I'll share the link of those videos where you can, you know, in general, uh, well-architected framework. We talk about security pillar. We talk about operational efficiency. Uh, then we have cost optimization. Another three factors also in, involved in that fault tolerance and all those stuff. So I'll share the link where I have discussed well architected framework within AWS, which you can go through to understand what exactly it looks like. Now, in terms of the dashboard, right? So we have a few dashboard that what we get while deploying it. So some are foundational dashboard where you get a kudos dashboard. This is one of a famous dashboard that more of a DevOps manager and IT manager uses it. Cost intelligence dashboard, again, comes with a very beautiful perspective of, you know, uh, one place where you can get everything. I'll show you a public dashboard, what AWS has given, because today I'm going to deploy a dashboard. It takes 24 hours, you know, to ingest all those data. Then only it will be able to show you the, uh, what exactly parameters or resources that I'm running. Obviously my account doesn't have much resources as of now, because I have deleted it long back. I don't want to pay uh, for the resources, which I'm not using it. That's the best practices, right? Just to save the cost KPI and modernization dashboard. We have as well, all the KPI metrics and everything is getting captured within these dashboards. So these comes under foundational dashboard. 
We have some advanced dashboard, what we call as Tau, which is more of a trusted advisor reports uh, as part of an organization. So you can see that too. We have compute optimizer where you will see, uh, you know, recommendation towards moving from one instance to another and save this much of cost because uh, you're not, you know, uh, utilizing, let's say m 58 x large for an application deployed on top of that. So let's move that from a M5 8X large to let's say M54 X large or 2X large depend upon the recommendation. So obviously uh, that level of uh, granularity you also get. We have cost anomaly uh, dashboard too. I'll show you that uh, these dashboards as well. Additional dashboard we have trends which is more on the financial side and sustainability proxy metrics dashboard as well. So as I mentioned, there is a public framework uh, the public dashboard what AWS has launched and where we can see all sorts of data with a multi-account metrics. So I hope this clears a lot in terms of the cloud intelligence dashboard. But what all things, obviously, uh, always I try to, you know, understand why uh, instead of understanding what. But before starting the video, I thought let's at least give you a glimpse of what exactly I'm going to discuss and then we will discuss about why and what is the significance of, uh, you know, uh, these dashboards uh, for us to deploy? Because everything we are deploying in the world of uh, our industry, we should have some sort of significance, significance to deploy it, right? So what all things intelligence dashboard is helping us to reduce it, right? So that's why, how can I figure out the impact of savings plan, reserve instances? So today I have, de I have, you know, deployed a certain number of instances. I have a savings plan. I have a reserve instances, but do I get some sort of better number after having the savings plan or reserve instances? How can I track that basically? Then how you can visualize the cost and usage across multiple pairs. So let's say you have multiple pairs under multiple pairs. You are running 500 accounts, 600 accounts, then how you can manage all those that that's where the intelligence dashboard is helpful track the cost optimization metric like unit of the compute then see the opportunities how can i see the opportunities to become more cost optimized because uh, what trend that i have seen in the industry over my ex entire experience of this cloud journey that people go ahead and deploy anything initially and then they worry about optimizing it so that's why i always say cloud is cheap only when you know how to deploy the resources. I, otherwise, you'll be spending a lot of money as compared to your data center. How can I learn what trends are important to track? Obviously, not everything is important from cost perspective or from financial perspective. So those are the thin line metrics that we have to maintain and figure out what exactly we have to track. Then get alerted by the anomalies, which is basically at the peak traffic, let's say there is a, some peak in the cost as well. How can I uh, detect those or get alerted from those anomalies? So those uh, set of uh, functionality, the granularity we also get with the dashboards. Get the granular insight to my cost, then track the LOB's adoption of Spot, Graviton, GP3. Get my entire organization to agree on adopting the cost optimization. This is very important factor for any organization. Obviously security, I, I keep security always on the top, then to the cost optimization factor, because obviously if you already deployed resources and now we are going for the optimization, we are spending, let's say $100,000, but in an actual, we can save almost $60,000 or $50,000 on top of that. Then yes, we should do the optimization. Otherwise uh, coming to the cloud, uh, doesn't make sense. I'm not saying cost is only the factor, but we have scalability, agility, and all those factors also very important for us. But cost always, uh, you know, taken care by the businesses that what they see, uh, whether moving to a cloud is a fruitful decision or not. Empower my cloud center of excellence to make the optimization recommendation on the data and use the information about the past usage to make decision about the future. So you, you can see the trends, you can see the forecast as well. Obviously we have certain set of uh, modules within AWS like Cost Explorer. You can you know create a lot of uh, insights from Cost Explorer. I'm not denying that fact, but cloud intelligence dashboard is much more useful uh, because of the factors that what we have discussed. So I hope uh, this might given you a fair amount of idea that why cloud intelligence dashboard or what 
you can do with the cloud intelligence dashboard what all uh, you know important pointers that we are trying to save it over here now what problem ci dashboard now uh, from moving onwards i'll i'll be calling it as a ci dashboard cloud intelligence dashboard uh, as a short form solving for us obviously it is easy to use all the insights in a plain language it's not like in a specific language that you are running it's a plain english format language organized by the service category like you have ec2 then storage ebs s3 and all those level of granularity is there after you know deploying the dashboard high level overviews uh, it is much more secure supported by aws im so you can control the access no agent is required to be running on any of the services so that's one important and very good part of uh, these dashboards are data stays within your org and all are the native aws services that we are in. we are not going for the third party tool i'm not denying the fact that we don't have a third party tool to track all those stuff but uh, we have open source as well where you can do the assessment and you know the policy deployment and all those stuff plus the cost track usage but for uh, if you are already getting aws support to build out all these dashboard why should i go with the third party vendors in depth over 100 visuals obviously uh, again it's not messy i'll show you how uh, because again you are getting a lot of data over here that makes it more messy ideally right but it's not it's very clean formatted uh, dashboard what we are getting resource level granularity what i mentioned fully customizable and ml driven insights so these are uh, machine learning driven insights what we get in from the back end cost effective uh, again all these dashboards are quick set which is more of a power bi it's it's more of a business intelligence dashboard if, if you have if you are aware of microsoft power bi so this is something similar to what amazon is owning in the back end which is quick uh, you just have to bear a cost of 18 dollar per month uh, that's that's for the cost of uh, power bi and serverless pay as you go whatever resources that you are using in the back end uh, if let's say if you are using s3 for storing a lot of uh, data then yes we have to pay for that but as i mentioned at the start 100 150 dollars 200 at max that's what in an enterprise if you are running 200 dollars is nothing right and you are getting a lot of data out of it so a lot of dashboards right uh, we talked about uh, in the in this section i told you like we have foundational dashboard advanced dashboard and additional dashboard too right so we have a lot of dashboard which dashboard is useful where you can use what kind of dashboard so what trend i have seen the trend dashboard and the ci dashboard this is presented at the cfo level or the director of finance right so they they want to track the unit economics or they want to track the optimization at the cfo level they they are not worried about like what exactly you are using in the back end at the tech side right so trend dashboard which is on the financial side ci dashboard which is on the tracking of the unit economics and a lot of other factors as well the financial trends and everything that's where this uh, these two dashboards are getting used and again i'm sh just sharing my experience uh, it can be of a different usage anybody can use it totally depend upon the requirement but that's what i have seen kpi dashboard at the finops level uh, again finops is uh, you can consider it's more of a financial and a devops combination where uh, it's not only the responsibility of the finance guy to track everything you can integrate with the devops engineers and create this journey of a finops nowadays a lot of finops uh, opportunities are there in the market so uh, another good trend uh, it's running in the market so if you are having a finops uh, you know understanding then you can ease, you can get a job uh, at a good level in the industry as well not within india across the globe i'm talking about now kpi dashboard finops teams are uh, quite responsible for tracking the optimization that's what they are meant for uh, then obviously finding more ways to optimize because the actual uh, you know the cost is uh, they are paying it right for us uh, as part of the organization and forecast so for example today i'm spending 100 dollars i might uh, reduce it to 50 dollars right so that forecast can be shown within kpi dashboard as well 
the kudos dashboard is more of a or the tau dashboard is more for the devops manager or the director of it that's what they are interested with in tracking down obviously the financial trend the granular level insights of those trends at the service layer and everything tau dashboard again at the security layer finding more opportunities for improving the performance and the secure at the security layer so that's where the trusted advisor dashboard comes into picture so these two dashboards are are more on the tech side the devops engineers managers it managers they want to you know see all these kind of a reports so that's my experience towards uh, what dashboard uh, you should use again uh, it varies from org to org it varies from individual to individual okay let's look at uh, some of the capability of uh, previously defined dashboard like kudos obviously kudos give you a high level detail of the and the operational insight ability to drill down at the resource level granularity again i'm i'm going to show you the dashboards i am going to show you the deployment model uh, these are just a pointer obviously we have discussed everything whatever i'm 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 highlighting over here but yes uh, kudos dashboard as i mentioned earlier for the devops managers it managers that's what uh, they are very interested to understand kudos dashboard you can find out auto generated cost optimization recommendation again this is something at the tech layer uh, you want to understand it right so today i'm spending 100 dollar i see the opportunity after seeing your dashboard parameters that hey i can at least reduce it to 20 dollars again so it can go to 80 dollars from 100 dollars i still am saving 20 dollars a month so those level of understanding granularity what we get and based on that we take an action right uh, with our finos practitioner or product owner or engineering team out of the box it allow you to quickly identify the spike, which is more of an anomaly detection, uncover the uncertainties in AWS usage. So those uh, level of uh, functionality, what we get at the kudos layer. Now, uh, uh, for the, from the demo perspective, I will show you how to deploy the kudos dashboard and the CI dashboard. REST dashboard, like API and rest of the others one, uh, you can go ahead and deploy as per the usage. Because after deploying the dashboard, I am going to delete it. Uh, I don't want to pay uh, certain dollars while doing a demo. Okay, uh, this is the reference link basically. So let me stop the presentation actually. Discard, copy. This is more of a, let's see, a dashboard available on the public platform given by AWS. Or, or the uh, you know the set of uh, people or the folks that they are maintaining it from the customer end uh, so that's what they are showing it right so you can see this is this is what this is kudos you can get the tau dashboard cost intelligence dashboard so all the dashboard even uh, i guess there is a C cost ci dashboard for azure as well so that level of integration has been made at this layer too now you can see like in, you are getting an invoice of three months ago, two months ago, then the trend as well we are getting. Uh, what level of spending uh, on the saving side we have over here, then all the regions that you are operating with, all the resources like DynamoDB, EC2 instances, Guard Duty. So you are getting the granular level of uh, you know uh, data over here. Based on that, yes, uh, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, go for the optimization, go for the trend like over here, as you can see, this is showing a trend that we are down by what, $121, something like that. So, uh, sorry, $121,000. Uh, that's the level of uh, downfall that what we have seen. Again, this is good for business because uh, we have cut down this expenses, right? So I will share this link, go through this dashboard, but I'll show you how to deploy it as well. This is more of a quick site model. Let's go back to the presentation. Uh, I just want to show you how to deploy these dashboard and how the dashboard, basically the flow, the process flow looks like. Let's take a pen. Now, uh, if you're if you're working in, a, in an enterprise, obviously the management account is your payer account. That's where all the billings and everything happens. So within AWS, we have something called AWS cost and usage report. We call it as AWS CUR. So this is required. That so what we are doing basically, we are taking or we are configuring CUR, AWS CUR, sending that to S3 bucket. 
at the payer level and then we are configuring a replication at the data collection account. So that's where we are deploying all our dashboard because it is not recommended to use a management payer account or a master account to do the deployment of the dashboard. It has to be taken care by a different, uh, you know, a member account. So that's what we are calling as a data collection account. So we are, uh, we are sending that uh, to S3 bucket present in the data collection account. That's where the glue crawler comes into picture. So it runs once every day and capturing the data of uh, what we are getting from the usage report. This is more of a raw format report, CSV format, right? So raw format, until and unless uh, you are doing something uh, with the raw format file, you're you know, converting that into a dashboard kind of a system, then it is useful, but raw format file, nobody wants to see it. It's uh, very hard to understand, you know, some sort of data within the raw format. Always uh, prefer to go with the graphical representation. So once we have uh, the glue crawler, it creates a data catalog basically and updates the table of, as per the you know schedule what has been given. So the first step, the curve will go to S3 bucket. That's the first step. The second step is more of on the replication from S3 through S3 from one account to another. The third step is crawler on the glue side. That's that's more of an ETL uh, kind of a system. Uh, you know. Uh, inserting the data and creating a data catalog, maintaining it based upon the schedule that we are running. Then we have uh, Athena. From Athena, what we are doing, basically we are taking all, uh, we are querying all the data from the S3 bucket with the help of Athena because Athena is more of an analytics platform, okay? Using the schema, what we have in the data catalog. So obviously this is, this is more of a raw format file that what we are getting. Athena will take that and since crawler has taken that, uh, you know, the file, the raw format file and created a schema from that raw format file and inserted into a data catalog. So with the help of Athena, we are just querying. These are the SQL queries, right? So the schema is coming from the data catalog. The file is, uh, the curl report is coming from the S3 bucket. Combination of both, we are just creating and analyzing it and then finally sending it to the quick site, which is more of a BI dashboard, business intelligence dashboard. So on the right hand side, you can see the sixth step is a quick site data set uses Athena as a data source, right? And most data sets are cached using Spice. Spice is an in-memory uh, database engine, you can see that. And based upon that, it refreshes daily. Then we are deploying a dashboard, uh, whether it is CI dashboard, Kudos dashboard, Tau dashboard, and sending it to the executives, FinOps, engineering team based upon the requirement with the help of AWS IAM or SSO integration. So this is a workflow that how you can deploy a dashboard. Again, uh, we are doing it in phases. So phase one, uh, it's, it's more on uh, the management account. Then we are going on the data collection account, doing the same stuff, whatever we have discussed. Okay, uh, let me stop the presentation. And there is another link that this is more of a workshop that I'll be going to you know take a reference of it, as I mentioned. So we will be going to deploy a Kudos dashboard. I'll be sharing this link as well. So let's click on demo, uh, not on demo, let's click on deploy. So here we have uh, certain steps to follow. One of the prerequisites that you need to have a quick site subscription. So if you don't have a quick site subscription, uh, you, will, you will not be able to do it because the dashboard is coming to a quick site. So you have to spend that $18 a month subscription model. Okay, uh, so in this video, what I'm going to do, I'll be having a management account where I'll be deploying one set of uh, cloud formation template and on the data collection account, I'll be deploying another set of cloud formation steps. So we just have to follow the sequence. The first step, right? Uh, the prerequisite I mentioned, you need to have a quick site subscription. Uh, apart from that, everything is written within your, uh, this one, uh, the dashboard, I mean, within the cloud formation template. Now, if you see this diagram, this is not mandatory that management account has to be used. You can use data collection account to deploy both the dashboards. Okay, uh, perfect. Uh, so in the destination account, which is more of a data collection account, create a destination for cur aggregation. Now, 
click on la this launch stack again anybody can do this i'm just showing you so that you know you get familiar with all these uh, stuff the parameters that what we are getting now what we have to do uh, replace the common parameters destination account id where you are deploying a dashboard so let's copy our account id which is i'm in the data collection account i'm using chrome for the data collection account and safari for my management account uh, you can use uh, this prefix for all your s3 buckets now if you are uh, using same account a data collection account to deploy all the resources then you have to select true because the cur has to be created locally if you are using management account then it has to be false okay destination account uh, which is basically a source account right so i'm going to copy this is my management account this is cloud for devops so let's copy this put it here you don't have to so if you already have created figured out like what all you know uh, the policies that you need to or the permission that you need to be in place then you can go ahead and create a role based on that you select a role over here one more important thing if you have a multi master account multi multi payer account right then you can use comma and then again use that number of uh, accounts that what you have click on i acknowledge create the stack so that part takes somewhere around two to three minutes sometime five minutes depend upon the resources okay uh, let me go back to our workshop let's see what is the second step obviously once this is done we just have to wait uh, step two is management payer or the source account create a cur and replication rule so what i will do i will copy this link address now you can uh, like see log into the source account uh, launch a stack enter your destination which is a data collection account id over here so this is my safari where uh, we have our management account you can see cloud for devops i'm just launching a stack keeping everything as same except i'm changing the account id so that has to be a data collection account id uh, keeping everything same true uh, you don't have to touch this one just click acknowledge and create stack let's go back to our data collection account uh, this is done perfect this is done so that's not an issue oh uh, okay yeah. right so let's go back to our workshop in step third in the destination slash data collection account deploy the dashboard that is the final part but before that you have to prepare quick sight right so let me open quick sight so you can search quick sight i already have a subscription of quick sight so i don't have to worry about you know buying another subscription so it's in it's deployed in virginia so let's see as you can see our home let me close it if i go to dashboard it's totally blank right uh, let me go back to this one what is the status let's see this is done okay so the two templates got deployed one in the management account one in the data collection account so let's go to our uh, workshop this part is already done i showed you my quick site is up and running then directly i'll go ahead and deploy the dashboard the dashboard deployment i am doing in my data collection account because it is the best practices not to touch the master pair account click on launch stack let's see what all options we have we have we need to have few parameters i have enabled quick site yes i understand i need to manually give, give the permission yes replace with quick site user so if i go to quick site and click over here so that's the quick site id uh, the username i have where is that so i'll replace that uh, you can uh, leave uh, you know the parameters what we have here you can see deploy a kudos dashboard deploy ci dashboard deploy kpi dashboard 
So you can go ahead and deploy uh, all the three dashboard or if you don't want to deploy a K KPI dashboard and you are only worried about kudos and CI dashboard. So you can go ahead and uh, select that. Here also you are getting Tau dashboard or compute optimizer, primary tag, everything. That's de totally depend upon you. So I'm leaving everything as default. You don't have to worry about touching anything over here apart from obviously the quick site integration and uh, what all dashboard you're deploying. So let's go ahead and create a stack. Now this will take time. Uh, we, we have to wait because uh, this will go ahead and check the permissions on the quick side. Uh, then it will start deploying this dashboard. Everything is perfectly fine. Obviously, in the back end, it's also creating Athena, the schema which we talked about in our workflow. Meanwhile, this is getting deployed. Let me go back to our public dashboard. Where is that? This one. Okay. Now, uh, let's say we go to cost intelligence dashboard, right? Here you can, you know, filter out a lot of uh, stuff. For example, at the top layer, you can see cost summary, compute summary, storage summary, which is reserve plan and saving plan summary. So you can select that. Uh, as you can see, previous month saving is less than two, uh, minus 2%, right? It is down. So we this month, it is uh, down with certain percentage, whatever the number is, right? Now, if you scroll down, you are getting average hourly EC2 cost by pricing model, then on demand, how much you are spending on demand. So you are getting, uh, you know, uh, $200 at, at one point of time you have touched somewhere around $200, then pricing model summary. This is what the CFO wants to know what exactly it looks like, how much on-demand uh, coverage we have, what is the coverage of uh, reserve plan savings, reserve instances savings plan on top of on-demand, what, how much spot coverage we have. So all sorts of analytics, the numbers, uh, you can see it over here, right? Now, again, if I go back to, let's say, Tau dashboard, which is more on the trusted advisor report like flagged checks by category then fault tolerant security flag again trusted advisor work on the well architected framework right fault tolerant security then we have cost optimization performance flag service limits so all things we are getting it over here so this is uh, again uh, more concerned towards the security team or again on the devops team who is the or the infra team who is taking care of all these stuff uh, one more thing you can filter it out with the account so as you can see these are the test organizations that uh, so if, if you don't want to see everything let's see just the linked account with this id right so that level of filtration you can also do with this tau dashboard or any ci dashboard let me go back to our cloud formation what exactly it's doing Let's see, so it's deploying CI dashboard. Uh, Athena data source is created. Initial setup is done. You will get, uh, you know, uh, the URL once the CI dashboard gets deployed. So we just have to wait. Meanwhile, I'll show you one more thing, Athena. So let's go to Athena. Again, this is a very, uh, you know, uh, a very good, part what we are you know deploying it over here because I have used cost intelligence dashboard I have deployed the kudos one and the cost intelligence as well uh, KPI was uh, not uh, much of my use initially so I deployed actually uh, three dashboard kudos uh, CI and uh, this one compute optimizer so I have done those deployment. Rest of the dashboard was like, okay, we can do it. But initially it was not of my use. Now, if, if you can see, we have a database, uh, data source as AWS data catalog, and this is the database CICD underscore curl. And the schema, you can see that we have schema created over here. So for example, if I want to preview the table, limit 10. So the schema is created over here. It's not filled out. Uh, we are just uh, viewing it, right? 
So once uh, we have a data because I mentioned it takes 24 hours for us to you know generate a data the cur takes 24 hours in the back end it's taking the cur report and then uh, manipulating it to show you the results so I cannot show you the exact data apart from the public dashboard what AWS has given to us but the funda of deploying how to deploy and how to get all those stuff is the same way that what I have showed to you with the help of cloud formation I find it easy so that's why I have uh, taken the route of uh, cloud formation and I don't want to reinvent any wheel. Okay, so this is done. Uh, let's see, this is the output CI dashboard. So either you click this or you go to your uh, quick site dashboard and click refresh. You will see two dashboard over here. Kudos. Uh, initially, if it, it will not show your data, that 24 hour of uh, format right if i scroll this uh, i mean expand this i don't have a value again nothing has been you know uh, filter it out or nothing has been inserted yet so either you go to your uh, quick site and navigate to your dashboard and click and show it to the management or you go to cloud formation and click that particular link again it will come back to the same stuff so I hope this clears a lot. I know the video is quite long, but I hope uh, the funda of uh, CI dashboard, the level of uh, the kind of dashboard that we want to deploy and why we need uh, these kind of dashboard at an enterprise level or even at the mid, le mid size uh, company level as well, uh, because we are not spending a lot of money, right? So that level of uh, sense, that level of verification, that level of proactiveness is always required when you are dealing with the cloud world. Now, I was talking about the CI process, uh, CI dashboard deployment. There's one more process, which is more with the command line tool. This is something more of an homework for you guys. So this is a GitHub link. I'll be sharing the GitHub link in the description section. So please go through this. Uh, you don't have to uh, do a lot of stuff but the prerequisites has to be checked out. Obviously one is your, uh, when you're doing uh, this one, the CI uh, with the, C, uh, the tool itself, the deployment, then you have to have a quick site that is required on both the side. Then you have to have a schema on the Athena side and uh, you have to have a cur report. Uh, until unless your cur report will not get generated, the schema cannot be created, right? So this works on a, uh, you need to have on a Python. So you have, you just have to go to your uh, cloud shell, which is AWS cloud shell. So this is your AWS cloud shell and you just have to, you know, follow the steps. What has been given it over here. You just upgrade the Python three version, then pip install and upgrade CI, CID CMD tool. That's the tool name. And once you do a CI CMD deploy, it will show you a lot of different options. So go through it. And if you're facing any issue, place out a comment in comment section. This is one of a very interesting topic to discuss always on the cost side. I'm there to help you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.